Ever have this happen to you up in thumb position? What's going on is Jason Heath and Sarah Hogan of the St. Louis Symphony passed along the idea for this video to me. Now, I recently put out a video about keeping your fingers curved in lower positions, but it's an even more common problem, I think, or at least just as common up in thumb position. And the problems and solutions are a little bit different, so I thought this would be a great follow-up. Also, there is the somewhat confusing fact that a lot of prominent players do collapse their fingers up in thumb position. Is that okay? Who am I to judge? Well, that's what we're digging into in today's video. The first thing that popped into my mind when I thought about this topic was this wonderful video from David Allen Moore's Fractal Fingering Course in Discoverable Bass. Let's take a look at a little clip. One other important factor to address is the idea of rounded versus collapsed fingers. And it's just something that I wanna get out of the way early on in here. There are different people whose hands are gonna look different depending on how their actual hand is constructed. But what's important for me is the structural function of the hand and not necessarily visually whether those knuckles are in that position or not. What's important is the concept of an arch as opposed to an arc. So if you have an arch, an arch is an actual architectural structure with a capstone where when weight is applied, the structure actually gains strength from the application of the weight on top of it. And an, an arc is just a shape. So like an old French fry can be. <laughs> an arc, but it's that's not actually That's structure. way too amazing. So, Great for example, if I'm set up in this position, if I understand that this knuckle is functioning as the capstone of that arch, that's going to allow me to support my weight and bring my weight to bear on these fingers. Jeff, can you join me for a second? So if you put your hand on that rigid knuckles and then just lean your weight into it as much as you like, yeah. so you see that that's a, an actual functional structure. Whereas if I'm off to the side like this, and be gentle because I don't want you to hurt me, you can see that that immediately wants to collapse into the body of the base. Thank you so much. The intrinsic muscles in the hand have to be strong and have to be set up in a way to support the hand. I'm trying to use forearm muscles as little as possible, but I do need that strength in the hand in order to support the weight on the fingerboard. Okay, so either method can work if you've got the structure in the right place, and definitely check out this course for more nuggets like that. Awesome. While I know that either method can work, I just frankly don't like that collapsy feeling under my finger. It's probably just like David was talking about, just everybody's hands built a little bit different. I just like the feeling of keeping things curved all the way, and it just feels more stable. And there's also something about landing on the tip of your finger or close to the tip of your finger, for me at least, I feel like I close the pitch more cleanly, and I feel like my vibrato, I have a little bit more flexibility with it. And we'll go way down the rabbit hole on thumb position vibrato in a future video, don't worry. I think that for collapsing fingers, the first finger is particularly problematic for people, and there are some situations where I do let my first finger collapse, especially if I'm playing like a, a double stop, I might let that go depending on what double stop I'm playing, like a minor third, or minor sixth rather, yeah. I might let that go. Uh, it just all depends on context. So I've got a few methods for working on keeping these fingers collapsed. And the first thing I do is, as with everything, I just try to take the bass out of the picture and practice on my hand, practice on the side of the bass, practice on a tabletop, and just notice how my fingers naturally go down. And I just think, you know, I, I don't have any other moment in my life when I let these first finger joints collapse. And I talked about this on the low position video too. So if I don't do it in my day-to-day -day life, I try not to do it on the base. I know there are exceptions. I know that everybody's hands are a little bit differently. But with that in mind, I do like to work on developing just that strength and that arch like David was talking about. Another thing, just a practical thing, is keeping your nails short. I keep my nails pretty short. And if you even have any white showing, it can be... Uh, pretty much impossible to play in thumb position. So mm, something to keep in mind. Now in terms of exercises, I've got one that I, I guess it's my secret method, not secret at all of course, but I start with all of my fingers down. I'm gonna start in this sort of primary thumb position position where you got the thumb on the octave. <laughs> And you can do either a diatonic scale, G, A, B, C, or if it's more comfortable, and it might actually be more comfortable, G, A, B with three. So this is 
uh, what we call a semi-chromatic position from the Franco Petrachi simplified higher technique. That's a lot to take in. And again, a future video, but either the diatonic or the semi-chromatic is a good way to start. So you start with all four fingers down that we use in thumb position typically. So thumb, one, two, three, pinkies just chilling over here. And we keep in mind what David was talking about. You wanna be over the string. I like to think of having my knuckle, like this second knuckle, whatever the correct term is, over the G string or over the D string. So if I'm too far this way, collapsing can occur. If I'm too far this way, uh, it just doesn't work. So I try to have things nice and kind of over the string. Not so much for the third finger, but for the second finger and the first finger, they're sort of like chilling pretty close to over the G string. So I start with all of these fingers down and then I practice just lifting three and letting two up and I just observe and I notice that everything is just staying nice and curved and I go to one and you can see there's a little bit of pronation motion going on in my arm when I go between these it's not just typing although you can depending on the context and then I finally practice like two to one and then last of all, practice thumb and one. I think when people are working on trying to keep this first finger curved, they focus on thumb and one. I find that actually to be the last thing I wanna do because it's just gonna wanna collapse like, like it does if you're in the habit of doing that, if your hand wants to do that. So start with the position and then take away. That seems to work best for me and for the students I work with. You can also practice putting your fingers down on the left side of the G string or in between the various strings, like between the G and the D string, just putting it right on the fingerboard and then moving it over the string. And again, taking away from the bass, touching different parts of the bass, uh, practicing on your arm when you're away from the bass, just practicing having a nice curved structure that will help. And finally, just making it a priority. I had a student who always collapsed his fingers and then he went off to summer camp. And I think I told this story in the other video, so sorry if I'm repeating myself. And he came back from summer camp and he never collapsed again and said, why? And he said, because my teacher at camp just would not let me play a note unless it was curved. And so just being really on top of yourself about that and just making it a priority, looking in a mirror when you're practicing, video recording yourself, seeing when does it collapse. And then finally, like Sarah mentioned, a lot of professionals do let their fingers collapse from time to time or maybe sometimes always up there in thumb position. Know that there are different ways to tackle this giant but wonderful instrument that we all play. And we've got another method for you linked up here. Check it out and we'll see you in the next one.